So the woman who has been sharing this information with me, who is an insider um, in Islam, she wants me to ask you, to implore you to share this information in these videos, even if you cannot stand the religion. She says that this is how we can help the women and girls that are trapped in these countries. So she starts this one off with, so Taliban and other misogynist Muslim males are enemies to the very God and prophet of the religion that those males claim to believe in. First though, we must clarify something. In Islam, Muslims must respect that the Quran is correct or uncorrupt. The evidence in Islam for that that Muslims are compelled to respect is 1509 in the Quran, but the Islamic scholars' interpretations of some of the words in the Quran are wrong especially because some words are contronyms. So one word has two or more meanings that are contradictory to each other, depending on the context and how we know those scholars are wrong because the God of Islam said things that are very clear, like in 3021 about marriage. So scholars interpretation of the words in four and 34 is nonsense. And God and his prophet are two different entities and Muslim males don't have a right to assume that God's intention when God used a contronym, a contronym word, because that prophet confirmed that assumptions or suspicions are lies. But more, inf but more information about this can be explained in detail in a different document that is specifically about the verse four and thirty-four. The prophet, um, the prophet saying or hadiths that have that type of protection from being criticized. And this is how we can talk about some of the prophet's sayings or hadiths and suspect them of being false, but we can't do that to the Quran. And the prophet of Islam didn't write anything. All of the Islamic texts were written by some male writers, not the prophet. And the parts of what the prophet said or did that we suspect of being false or that should be ignored, even if they are true, are parts that show the prophet contradicting himself or contradicting God. So any saying or hadith of the prophet that shows contradictions, especially towards vulnerable people, and Islam women and girls are vulnerable or weak people, are sayings and hadiths that Muslims are obligated to ignore. And we have a clear example from Islam that shows Muslims ignoring what the prophet did because the prophet contradicted the God of Islam. For example, the prophet married more than eight women, even though the God of Islam encourages males to only marry one woman. But a maximum of four women can marry one male in Islam in 4 and 03 in the Quran. Remember, people, marriage in Islam is supposed to be tranquil and merciful, according to 30 and 21 in the original Arabic Quran. Mar males generally won't provide a good marriage to one woman. So males are very arrogant if they believe that they are suitable for four women. And in Islam, arrogant people are in hell forever. So Muslim males are obligated to ignore what the prophet did since he was married more than since he married more than four women. Since the prophet's behavior contradicts what God allowed. In Islam, people are supposed to respect what God said first, then what the prophet said, not the other way around. And Muslims are obligated to ignore anything that the prophet said or did that contradicts the God of Islam. So this also applies to the horrific FGM. People must ignore any hadith they believe the prophet mentioned about it because FGM contradicts very crucial scriptures from God and his prophet, scriptures that God and his prophet don't contradict to each other in, but more about this in another document. And people's criticisms or problems with Islam is mostly caused by people's inability to understand the difference between what corrupt, arrogant, vile males that claim to be Muslim are doing versus what the God of Islam and his prophet actually allowed. For example, forced marriage is forbidden in Islam because, when, because the woman's consent is essential for a marriage in Islam to be valid or her children are considered illegitimate children in the eyes of God. And the X is considered grape, which is one of the biggest sins in Islam. Now about how lenient Islam is supposed to be. Here are pieces of evidence from Islam itself. Evidence from Islam that leniency is obligatory in Islam, except with big sins, and that it is forbidden in Islam to be very strict or extremist. 
Number one, the prophet declared as he was praying to God, treat harshly those who rule over my ummah, people with harshness, and treat gently those who rule over my ummah, people with gentleness. The Arabic version of it is, here it is in Arabic, which I don't read, but here it is on the screen. And the original Arabic version makes it clear that the prophet was talking about everyone, but mostly the males who are responsible for taking care of others, like the ruler who is responsible for his country's people and the fathers who are responsible for their wife and children. And also the prophet was talking about women who are responsible for their children. Based on another prophet's hadiths where he said, all of you are guardians and all of you are responsible for your people. The ruler is a guardian and responsible for the people he rules. The man is a guardian and responsible for his family. The woman is a guardian and she is responsible for her husband's house and his, and his offspring. So all of you are guardians and all are responsible for your people. So a male doesn't have the right to be harsh. Being controlling and obsessive is harsh to women and girls. As a result, since the prophet himself is against being harsh. Number two, the prophet ordered, he didn't give a choice. He ordered, make things easy and do not make them difficult. So males don't have a right to make life difficult for women and girls. And a male is making life difficult for women if he is being obsessive about them and their behavior. Here's the Arabic version of that one. Number three, the prophet declared that people who are obsessive about religion will be ruined. It is one of his sayings or hadiths. So it's forbidden for males to be obsessive about girls and women's sin. Again, remember, English websites vary with their translation, and I translated it from the original Arabic version, but here is the Arabic version, and you can search on Google for websites that give English versions of it and compare it to, uh, compare it to several of those English versions if you want. Here's the Arabic version that she provided. Number four, the prophet also declared the religion of Islam is easy and who makes the religion a strict religion, then that strictness will destroy him. So it is another evidence that it is forbidden to be strict or harsh to girls and women since the religion is against being strict. The Arabic version that I translated into English, if you want to Google it um, to find any English websites with varying versions of it is down here. She, give, she gives you another Arabic version. Number five, the prophet also said, beware of going to extremes in religious matters for those who came before you were destroyed because of going to extremes in religious matters. So again, the religion is against being strict. It is forbidden to be strict towards women and girls. Here's the Arabic version of the prophet saying. Number six, the prophet also said, God did not send me to be harsh or cause harm, but sent me to teach and make things easy. And here is the Arabic version of that. Evidence that the prophet said people are supposed to or obligated to sin. The prophet himself said, were you not committed? I'm sorry, were you not to commit sins? Allah would replace you with people who would commit sins and then they would seek forgiveness from Allah. And Allah will forgive them from the sunnah.com. And this also confirms that women and girls have the right to commit sins. It is forbidden in Islam to obsess about their behavior and is forbidden to attack them, attack them because they committed sin. It is completely forbidden to commit the big sins. Big sins in Islam are rape, murder, theft, defamation, etc. But the other sins are easily forgiven by him. In 431 in the Quran, God himself declared that he would easily forgive people's sins as long as they don't commit the big sins. Evidence that the prophet of Islam said that suspicions or assumptions are the biggest types of lies. The prophet said, avoid suspicion and suspicions equal assumptions because suspicion is the most false form of talk. Most false form of talk equals assumptions are the biggest types of lies. And he continued to say, don't look for other, others' faults and don't spy from Sunnah.com. Since the prophet didn't make an exception, so it is forbidden to make assumptions about women and girls, and it is forbidden to spy on girls and women. Evidence 
from the religion of Islam that people only enter heaven with God's mercy. The prophet said there is none whose deeds alone would entitle him to get into paradise. It was said to him and Allah's messenger, not even you. Then he said, not even I, unless God wraps me in his mercy. You can copy and paste that paragraph to Google and you will see the results on Google that shows the websites with similar variations to that one. An easier definition in English, hopefully, for people is, all of you aren't going to enter heaven with your work. They said, not even you, prophet of God. The prophet said, not even I, unless God covers or wraps me with his mercy. Here is the original Arabic version. If you want to copy and paste on Google and try to and find English websites that mention both languages in it. And here she gives you the Arabic version. She says, again, in Islam, even if something is written in the masculine, it is also applied to women. And this follows the Arabic language, which is similar to Latin languages in this aspect. And with that, I'm going to end it. This is part one. There will definitely be a part two. So stay tuned. This is part two from my insider in Islam. She says, four more very important but brief things to know about Islam before I mention the other more lengthy topics. There are so many examples in Islam that show that women have the right to speak to males that aren't related to them, as long as both the women and males are talking to each other in, re in a respectful way in public areas. It isn't okay for a male and a woman to be alone together in a private area if he isn't her brother, father, uncle, son, nephew, grandfather, or husband. The Taliban can humbly ask Saudi Arabia for a list of examples, but I can mention a few of the following few examples. A. There are many examples in Islam during the Prophet's days of women being nurses for soldiers. The soldiers are males that aren't related to the women, so clearly women can have jobs where they can communicate with males as long as they're in public areas surrounded by people being respectful to each other. B, there was a woman who recently got divorced during the prophet's days, and she went out of the house to work on the palms in the farm she has in front of the public's eyes. Males that aren't related to her saw her work on the palms, and, her, and the prophet supported her decision to work on the palms. So clearly, women can work in front of males that aren't related to them, as long as they're not in private areas alone together. Here is the text in both English and then in Arabic. A male said, my maternal aunt was divorced and she wanted to collect the harvest from her date palm trees. A man rebuked her for going out to the trees. She went to the prophet who said, no, go and collect the harvest from your trees for perhaps you will give some in charity or do a good deed with it. And then she gives the Arabic interpretation right there. C, the prophet's wives were considered teachers to the public. So clearly women can be teachers in Islam. Taliban can ask Saudi Arabia about the validity of this and Saudi Arabia will find it easy to provide information that supports this. Number two, traditions, cultures are forbidden in Islam based on 2.170 in the Quran. Here is the text of the verse. When it is said to them, follow what God has revealed, they replied, no. We only follow what our forefathers practice. Would they still do so even if their forefathers had absolutely no understanding or guidance? A lot of societies depend on traditions and traditions equal culture to let itself obsess about a woman's or a girl's behavior, but the traditions are forbidden in Islam. So if they're Muslim, they should reject traditions or they're against the religion and against God and God curse those that are against him. And a curse means the cursed person won't receive God's mercy and no one goes to heaven except through God's mercy in Islam. Number three, Taliban said they would detain the girls and women who speak audibly or show their face or wear clothes that aren't modest, etc. But this is completely forbidden in Islam since nothing in Islam allows males to detain girls and women for speaking audibly or for showing their face or for wearing clothes that aren't modest. And most Muslims are supposed to believe that God didn't forget anything. Like in 1964, the Quran and God in Islam said that he completed the religion in 5 and 03. And the prophet of Islam said that he finished the religion too. 
So since there is nothing in Islam that allows males to detain girls and women for these things, then Taliban and Iran too don't have the right to detain girls and women for these things. So Taliban is tagot. Again, in Islam, a tagot is a person who says that they're a Muslim, but they're not really a Muslim because they are creating new rules that God and his prophet didn't create. And that person is trying to force the new rules onto others. And in Islam, a non-Muslim isn't allowed to rule a Muslim country. So since Taliban is Taghat, then Taliban isn't Muslim. And so Taliban isn't allowed in Islam to rule a Muslim country. Also, it is clear how perverse Taliban is because they don't want women to go out of the home without a male related to them. But then Taliban wants women to be detained alone in a place where males that aren't related to the woman can open the door and assault them. This is illogical and is another evidence that shows how deceitful Taliban is. Even the big sin of theft in Islam doesn't require detainment. Sure, they cut the hand of the thief, but no detainment is involved. So the thief knows 100% they won't be SA'd. And SA is one of the big, biggest sin in Islam, by the way. But Taliban stupidly wants to detain girls and women for being humans who choose their own sins, sins that aren't big sins in Islam. Taliban and males that are like them are the enemy of God and his prophet because God and his prophet allow people to have free will and choose their own sins, except the big sins. So for Taliban to try and forbid what God and his prophet permitted, this is the behavior of an enemy of God and his prophet. Number four, about Zane, someone who has X with someone else without being married to them. Males that want to marry a virgin or a zany, males that want to marry a woman who isn't a zany. In Islam, people who are arrogant or hypocrites will be in hell um, eternally. So all of the hypocritical males that committed zina but want a virgin, well, those males will be in hell forever, according to Islam, because hypocrisy is extremely arrogant, especially when a person committed one of the big sins. God himself said that a zany male should only marry a zany woman or mush, mushrika. A mushrika is a Christian or Jewish woman. Since Muslim males are only allowed to marry a woman who believes in one of the three Abrahamic religions. And that zany woman should only marry a zany male in 24.3. 24.3 in the Quran is surah or al-nur verse 3. So, a zany male doesn't have a right to marry a woman who didn't commit zina, regardless if she was a virgin or a divorcee. Any male that ignores such a clear order from God, well, that male is being arrogant. So he will be in hell forever. And God didn't allow any exception. So no one has a right to make exceptions. So the zany male that repented still has to only male, marry a zany woman or a mushrika, since God didn't make an exception, especially since zany people committed a sin. I'm sorry, a big sin, because having X outside of marriage is a big sin. And this is why not respecting such a clear order about those that commit big sin is unacceptable in Islam. And a male that is deceitful by him pretending not to be a zany, even though he knows that he is a zany, then that male is again being very arrogant and arrogant people burn in hell eternally in Islam. I'm going to end that there. That will be the part two. I will have a part three to continue and try to finish up um, all that she is trying to get out so that she, um, she believes that this information will help women and girls that are being ruled by the Taliban currently. Okay, so we're on part three from my insider in Islam. She says, child marriage is forbidden in Islam. More about this can be in a separate video, but a summary is below. Keep in mind the Muslim Shia in Iraq are obligated um, the way all Muslims are obligated to respect what God and his prophet said. Since the Quran itself orders all Muslims to adhere to what God and his prophet said, first and foremost, and 459 in the Quran. Child marriage in Islam is forbidden, and the only reason why Muslim males imagine that it is allowed is that they imagine that Aisha, 
the third wife of the prophet, was reported to be nine years old. But even if they insist that she was nine, she cannot be compared to the rest of her gender, mainly because even if malicious males want to continue to believe that she was nine, because many other people hypothesize that, hopefully she was much older than nine. Those males should still acknowledge that she never got pregnant, so it is illogical to compare a person who never went through the risk of pregnancy and childbirth to the rest of her gender that is mostly capable of becoming pregnant. And God declared through a type of hadith or saying by the prophet called Kutsi Hadith. Kutsi Hadiths are basically the prophet telling people word for word what God wants him to say without any paraphrasing from the prophet. Have mercy on those on earth for God to have mercy on you. And there is nothing merciful about causing a nine-year-old to deal with the genitals of a male and to cause her to endure the crazy pain of childbirth and vaginal tears, infections from the tears, and incontinence because adolescent girls are more likely to have vaginal tears, infections, and incontinence incontinence from childbirth, according to medical studies. But again, Aisha never got pregnant, so Muslim males are illogical and unfair. And unfair people are cursed by the God of Islam if they compared her to the rest of her gender. And God made it clear to people in the original Arabic Quran more than 20 times that he supports logical opinions and to be fair. And 508 in the Quran, he ordered people to be fair. And it isn't fair to compare a person who never got pregnant to the rest of her gender that is mostly capable of getting pregnant. And by the way, Khadijah was the prophet's favorite wife, not Aisha. And Khadijah is the one who asked the prophet to marry her. He made sure to only be married to Khadijah until Khadijah died a natural death. Khadijah was 39 when she married the prophet when he was 25 years old. So his favorite wife was clearly an adult, an older woman. Saudi Arabia, the birthplace of the Prophet, and other Arab countries confirmed this information. But among living women, so Khadijah doesn't count in this context. When she was still alive, Aisha was his favorite. People Google it, or better yet, get the document to go viral and have Saudi Arabian officials, Saudi Arabia is the birthplace of the Prophet, confirm all of this information themselves. Here is an example from the Quran where God makes it clear that he supports logical and sensible opinions. The English version of the Quran available tends to be sketchy. Some of them get many scriptures mostly correct, but then they don't choose the proper words for other scriptures. And this website below was correct with their translation of that one verse in the Quran. And in that verse, I am simply showing one example of the God of Islam imploring people to be sensible and logical with their thought process to show that God in Islam supports logical opinions. And so God is against what's currently happening in various countries. And she gives a website link here. She says, here is a different website that correctly translated the Arabic version of that one verse 1118 of the Quran in which the God of Islam cursed the people that are unjust. She gives us another hyperlink. If you're on my YouTube page, all of this would be in a document that she has compiled for us. She says about women's faces specifically. One, in Islam, women are obligated to show their face while praying, and the obligatory five prayers a day are one of the more of the very important five principles or cornerstones of Islam. And to show their face if they're doing the holy pilgrimage or hajj or umrah in Mecca, Saudi Arabia. So males in Afghanistan or anywhere are illogical when they fail to understand that since women should show their face and hands while praying during by praying and during Hajj or Umrah, then women should be um, should also be able to show their faces and hands anywhere else. And those males that arrogantly refuse to understand this aren't Muslim because those males are tagot. So they have no right to rule a Muslim country, according to Islam. A tagot is a person who creates rules that God didn't create, and that person tries to force those rules that he created on others. This is exactly what the Taliban is doing to girls and women in Afghanistan. The word tagot is mentioned in the original Arabic Quran in 460 and also 1636. But the English versions usually don't um, mention that word, unfortunately. But people can hear that word from the audio version 
of that verse in Arabic. Keep in mind that the first T letter in Tagot is a substitution since the English language doesn't have a, and this is a letter in Arabic, and the closest um, to it in English is the T letter, though the Arabic language has this other letter, and she gives us an Arabic letter, and it is a true T sound in Arabic when they try to ban women from showing their faces and hands. The Islamic texts below show how Islam is supposed to be lenient and moderate and that Muslims are not allowed to be strict and harsh. The only exception was for the big sins, only then the specific punishments that are already commanded by God, God in the Quran for big sins are applied, but leniency is required for anything else. And the evidence for the fact that the big sins are seen differently by the God of Islam is verse 4 and 31 in the Quran, since he said that he can easily forgive sins except big sins. Here is the text from the prophet of Islam about how women should show only their face and hands to the male gender, except the father, brother, nephew, uncle, grandfather, and, and grandson after they started to have ministration. The prophet said, when a woman reaches the age of ministration, it does not suit her that she displays her parts of body except this and this. And he pointed to his face and hands. And then she gives a source from Sunnah.com. Also, logical women and girls need sunlight for vitamin D. And this is essential for their health. So it is essential to show the face and hands because women and girls get vitamin D from sunlight on the skin. And this is necessary for the health of their bones and for their mental and emotional health too. So Taliban is arrogantly committing a big injustice by not respecting girls and women's health, um, human need for essential vitamin D. Again, in Islam, God cursed the people that commit injustices and cursed people in Islam um, don't go to heaven. Furthermore, as mentioned, it is forbidden to make women and girls' lives much harder to live, and hypocrisy is forbidden in Islam, and in Islam, hypocrites burn in hell eternally. And surely, males don't want anyone to make life so difficult to live to the point that they can't show their own faces and hands. So males should stop their hypocrisy and respect that girls and women shouldn't cover their faces and hands. And about women's voices. It is actually forbidden in Islam for a male to ban women's voices because the prophet ordered people to be A, lenient and moderate in Islam, so extremist opinions are forbidden. B, the prophet said that people are supposed to sin, but God made it clear that it is completely forbidden to commit big sins. C, the prophet said that suspicions or assumptions are the biggest types of lies, so Taliban doesn't have a right to assume that people will make big sins if people simply talked audibly. D, it is fit, fitna. Islam mentions fitna in many versions of the Quran. I'm sorry, verses in the Quran. And it is an injustice and God cursed the people who commit injustices and cursed people don't receive God's mercy. And in Islam, people who don't receive his mercy will be eternally in hell. When males try to put the responsibility on women for male's behavior, and God of Islam himself said that one soul shouldn't be held accountable for what another soul does or doesn't do in the Quran in 3518. So according to that, it isn't the woman's problem if some males don't have the intellect to stay away and look away from the woman. Especially since God ordered Muslims to look away in the Quran in 2430. And especially in Islam, people have the right to choose their sins. So the woman can choose to abstain for, from wearing the hijab or headscarf because it isn't a big sin. And males don't have a right to demand or ask from her to wear a hijab because the males fail to look away and stay away. It is fitna and it is the opposite of what 3518 in the Quran said for males to want to hold women accountable for the male's failure to look away and stay away. And actually the male that failed to look away showed how emotional and lacking in manhood he is since he fails to look away. So he isn't suitable for marriage. So any woman and any girl would reject a male that failed to do something as easy as looking away. I'm only mentioning this point because I know how Muslim males want to assume they're suitable for marriage even when they're not. 
women don't respect males that fail to look away because it is easy to look away. Okay, so that is part three. And actually, I underestimated this is going to end up being four parts. So I can wrap up all that she wanted to show and highlight. So stay tuned for part four. Now we come to part four from my insider in Islam. She says, Taliban falsely mentioned the word temptation for the excuse of banning voices and faces. And temptation is the wrong and false word that they wickedly use to translate the word fitna because God himself in the Quran mentioned the word fitna many times in the Quran and in 8 and 28 in the Quran and 64, 15 in the Quran, God said that people's children and people's wealth are both a fitna. The several English translation websites and as well as myself agree the sensible translation for the word fitna is trial, as in the person's spirit or heart will be trialed, tested by the existence of X, Y, or Z. And the 8 and 28 verse in the Quran in the verse 64, 15 is a simple and clear example that shows why it is very misleading and repulsive for a Taliban or anyone to use the word temptation. And another verse in the Quran that proves um, that fitna means trial is the verse 2135 in the Quran, since in that verse, the God of Islam says that he tests people with good and evil as a fitna or trial. The word temptation usually has actual connotations for it, especially when it's mentioned by a misogynist group like Taliban and the Taliban are sick and unjust or unfair. When they try to change the meaning of the word fitna to make it an actual word, since fitna isn't an actual word. And in Islam, people are supposed to choose words that remove ambiguity to, dis to decrease the possibility of misunderstanding so that people don't spread misinformation because it is unjust to be reckless about the meaning of words, especially since the vulnerable half of society, women and girls, are impacted by the malicious male's reckless choice of words. So again, fitna means trial. Again, as in the person's heart and spirit are being trialed or tested by X, Y, and Z. And God declared that people aren't responsible for what another soul does or doesn't do. In the Quran in 3518, so women aren't responsible for what the male does or doesn't do in Afghanistan or anywhere. So his behavior is his problem. It isn't her problem. And the God of Islam was clear about the type of impact one word can have on, on people, both good word and the wicked word in 14 and 24 and 14 and 26 of the Quran. So Taliban and other malicious males don't have a right to choose repulsive, inaccurate words like the word temptation. Again, the appropriate, again, the word trial is the appropriate English word for the Arabic word fitna. Also, the God of Islam himself ordered all the people to lower their voice, comparing loud voices to the sound of donkeys. The evidence of that is in 3119 in the Quran. So the Taliban don't, doesn't respect God when the Taliban only directs their guidelines to women only. Also, a male that is so emotional to the point of him feeling tempted when he hears a woman's voice, that is a male that is lacking in manhood and doesn't deserve any respect. And again, he doesn't deserve to marry any woman because women don't respect males that are so emotional to the point of being tempted by anything. And of course, women don't want to marry a male that doesn't deserve respect. Voices exist to express oneself and to communicate. So it's illogical to try to ban voices. People in Islam are supposed to have free will. And this includes the free will to choose which sins they could commit and which sins they don't commit. So even if the Taliban is so stupid to the point of considering a woman's voice to be a sin and a woman's voice is not a sin, women have the right to choose their sins. And in Islam, people's voices aren't a sin. Uh, and people's voices in Islam certainly aren't a big sin. So people have the right to choose to have audible voices if they want Taliban could instruct um, public Instructing public, all people, not just women, to have quiet voices as much as possible to not disturb others. That would be fair 
for everyone. And God and Islam order people to be fair, like in 0508 in the Quran, because of course, women don't want to hear males loudness either. It is very arrogant that males and the male gender is the gender of most crimes statistically everywhere, believe that males can be loud in the first place, because the gender of most crimes should understand that it is arrogant and obnoxious for males to be loud in public in Islam. Arrogance makes a person to be in hell eternally. So males should stop their arrogance. It is logical for a country that claims to be Muslim to have all the general guidelines for all people in it for the sake of public decency, but the country doesn't have a right to be overly restrictive to one gender and lenient to the other gender, especially since terrorists and criminals are usually male. So it's very arrogant for a country to be lenient to the gender of most terrorists and criminals, but restrictive to the vulnerable people in the country. Girls and women are considered vulnerable people, according to the prophet, since he said, I have issued a warning concerning the failure to fulfill the rights of the two weak ones, orphans and women. It is also hypocritical to be like that. And hypocrisy is forbidden in Islam and hypocrites burn in hell eternally in Islam. Remember as well to tie it all together. So let's tie it all together. The evidence from Islam that girls and women are considered vulnerable people, according to the prophet, since he said, I have issued a warning concerning the failure to fulfill the rights of the two weak ones, orphans and women. So it is arrogant. It is very, I'm sorry. So it is very arrogant to harm a vulnerable person, especially a girl in Islam. Arrogant people burn in hell forever. Being unjust and unfair in Islam means that the unfair person is cursed by the God of Islam. And in Islam, the cursed person does not receive God's mercy. In Islam, people only go to heaven with God's mercy. So the Muslim males that try to be extremists or unjust and unfair are males that are cursed by God of Islam. So, and so those males are eternally in hell. She says, people, please share the video regardless of how you feel about Islam to help the girls and women tormented by the misogynist sick males. Please share the video with international human rights lawyers, journalists, Ashley Flowers, etc., to get the info to go viral and have Saudi Arabia involved since Saudi Arabia is the birthplace of the prophet and the prophet ordered Muslims to, to help fellow Muslims without any exception to any border. So Saudi officials are obligated to confront Taliban and other misogynist Muslims in any Muslim country. Muslims specifically aren't allowed to hide information, so they have to share the content of this document. Evidence that hiding that hiding information is forbidden. One, in two and 159, God cursed the people that hide information that God and his prophet provided. And again, a curse means that the cursed person doesn't receive God's mercy. And in Islam, people only go to heaven with God's mercy. Two, in two and 174, God declared that the people that hide the information will be painfully tortured in hell. Three, the prophet confirmed whoever conceived Whoever conceals knowledge that he knows, God will bridle him with the reins of fire on the day of resurrection. And no one has the right to hide information because they assume that if they shared information, there would be fitna. Fitna equals trial of the heart or spirit. Because the prophet confirmed that suspicions, suspicions equal assumptions, are the worst type of lies in one of his hadiths or sayings. So no one has the right to believe their suspicions and no one has the right to refrain from following God's orders of sharing the information. Since God cursed the people that hide information. So people must share the information that are one, the Quran, and two, the prophet's hadiths or sayings, and three, the information from science. Science and Islam go together, not against each other. Since God said, don't you think or can you be reasonable or logical in various parts of the original Arabic Quran, like in 23 and 80, the Surah al muminun verse 80, and in 6 and 50 in the Quran, or Surah al an -Am, verse 50. So God supports science, since science relies on logical foundations in analysis, as well as logical foundations in the manner of conducting studies. And God didn't make an exception for the people who have a suspicion or lie that sharing information could cause fitna. 
So since God didn't make an exception, then people don't have a right to make exceptions from their own personal assumptions, lies, suspicions. And really, the only people that are arrogant to women and harm women are the people that won't like this document. And those people will be in hell forever, according to both God and the prophet, as previously mentioned. So that is the directive. That is all of the information. Please take this and share it wide and far, even if you disagree, so that it may help the women and girls who are vulnerable to these misogynist males in their country. Thanks, and don't forget to like, comment, and share.